you are about to see the history of a truly remarkable place. It is the story of an extraordinary institution built by the dreams and hard work of equally extraordinary people. In the innovative spirit of its namesake, Kettering Health Network has grown to achieve unprecedented success. Today, we are an organization that inspires great pride. Our mission of Adventist Health Ministry has since the beginning been central to our philosophy. As I have watched the network grow and become stronger, I often looked to Galatians 2.20 as my guiding light and inspiration. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God's compassion can be witnessed in the skills and talents of the remarkable people who work at this great organization and by the goodness they have brought to this community. You'll soon see how this has guided our growth, fueled our passion for quality, and ensured our success for many years to come. I am extremely proud to be associated with the people who work at Kettering Health Network and support its rich history of caring. I hope after watching this program, you will be too. Throughout its history, Kettering Health Network has made a remarkable impact on its community. The facilities that comprise our network have a rich and diverse heritage. It's a heritage shaped by people, the doctors, nurses, and employees who, through the decades, have dedicated their lives to helping others. This heritage is one of innovation and a pioneering spirit, a quest to improve the lives of the people in our communities in ways never thought possible. From once humble beginnings, the Kettering Health Network now employs over 8,000 people in a nine-county service area and includes five acute care medical centers, a behavioral health care center, and more than 50 satellite sites. The innovative spirit of the Kettering Health Network is typified by our remarkable namesake, Charles F. Kettering. Born in 1876, Kettering spent most of his life grappling with tough questions and vigorously pursuing innovation. He was the director of research for General Motors for 27 years and became a sought-after speaker and advocate for education. His intelligence and tenacity led to a list of inventions and discoveries that would fill volumes. He held over 300 patents for inventions, many of which are part of our everyday lives. At the time of his death, Boss Kett, as he was affectionately known, was second only to Thomas Edison in the number of patents held. Charles Kettering's vision was to utilize innovative technology in the everyday total care of the patient in a community hospital setting. His son, Eugene Kettering, and Eugene's wife, Virginia, sought to fulfill that vision by building a hospital as a living memorial to Kettering's lifetime of work and achievement. Just a few years earlier, Eugene and Virginia had seen for themselves the incredible difference that quality health care can make in people's lives. During the polio epidemic in the 1950s, Eugene and Virginia Kettering were inspired by the compassionate care they witnessed firsthand at Hinsdale Hospital near Chicago. Hinsdale Hospital was founded as part of the healthcare mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, incorporating Christian values at every level of service. When Eugene and Virginia returned to Dayton and set about the work of spearheading the creation of Kettering Memorial Hospital, they rallied the support of community and business leaders to raise the funds to build the new hospital on land that was once part of the Kettering estate. Though the Ketterings were not Adventists, they insisted that the hospital be operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church 
because they had seen at Hinsdale how the Adventist healthcare philosophy resulted in excellent care in a compassionate environment. In 1961, ground was finally broken on what would become a remarkable healthcare institution. Two and a half years later, Kettering Memorial Hospital was officially dedicated on February 14, 1964. More than 22,000 people toured the new facility during its first open house. The Kettering campus immediately saw growth both in the variety of services offered and the size of the campus. In 1967, the Kettering College of Medical Arts opened adjacent to the hospital, offering two-year associate degrees. It soon became known as a leading training ground for medical professionals. Through the years, the popularity and growth of the college has been unprecedented. In recent years, generous philanthropic gifts by Oscar Boonshoft and others resulted in a much needed expansion. The Boonshoft Center for Medical Sciences includes new computer and science labs, a student union, and a learning resource center. Over 800 students are enrolled at the college, and bachelor's degrees are offered in nursing and health professions. But growth wasn't limited to the Kettering campus. When the need for medical care increased in the south suburbs, Kettering opened Sycamore Medical Center in 1978. The full-service facility boasted an emergency department, x-ray service, a clinical lab, surgery, cardiac rehab, and outpatient services. In the two decades that followed, Kettering, Sycamore, and their associated facilities continued to grow and innovate. By the late 1990s, the healthcare climate was becoming increasingly competitive. Administrators at Grandview Hospital and Kettering Medical Center began discussing the possibility of combining the strengths of their two organizations. At the time, some wondered if the different heritages of each health system would be at odds with one another. The truth was, Kettering's Adventist healthcare philosophy was astoundingly compatible with Grandview's rich heritage in osteopathic medicine. In 1926, doctors Heber Dill, William Gravitt, and Frank Dillatush pioneered the effort to bring the distinctive whole person care philosophy of osteopathic medicine to Dayton. They chose a house on West 2nd Street and named it the Dayton Osteopathic Hospital. By the late 1930s, the facility was outgrowing its modest home. This led to a major fundraising project to build a new facility nearby on vacant land on Grand Avenue. In 1947, the Dayton Osteopathic Hospital moved into its new home and was renamed Grandview Hospital. Only five years later, a series of expansions began that increased patient capacity and brought innovations and improved services. Expansion continued throughout the decades that followed, including the opening of the Ambulatory Care Center in 1978. Only five years later, the care center was expanded to include a 56-bed inpatient addition and was renamed Southview Hospital and Family Health Center. By the late 1990s, the Grandview system was the nation's third largest osteopathic health system, in addition to being a regional teaching center of the Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine.